From WJCT Studios in Jacksonville, Florida, I'm Ray Hollister. I'm Tom Braun. And this is Deemable Tech, tech help worth listening to. This week's episode of the Deemable Tech Podcast is brought to you by A Small Orange, homegrown hosting, a refreshingly different approach to web hosting on the web at asmallorange.com. And by audible.com. Hey, did you know that you are able to get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash deemable just because you're listening to Deemable Tech. Wow. Pretty cool. Over 100,000 titles to choose from, from your I- for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player like... The Hobbit, which of course was released as a major motion picture last year. In this fantasy classic, master storyteller J.R.R. Tolkien creates a bewitching world filled with delightful creatures and thrilling dangers. Narrator Rob Inglis will hold listeners of all ages spellbound with his skillful portrayal of hobbits, dwarves, and enchanted beasts. Or, if you're not into little people with hairy toes, uh, you can download any audiobook that you like. Just go to audibletrial.com slash deemable to download your free audiobook. Got a question about your computer, smartphone, tablet, or the internet? Give us a call at 1-888-972-9868 or send us an email at questions at deemable.com. So we are coming towards the end of our contest to win a $50 Amazon gift card. To be eligible, all you got to do is subscribe to us on YouTube and iTunes, then like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Then send us an email to giftcard at deemable.com and in that email, tell us your Facebook, Twitter, and username so we can verify that you actually did that stuff. That's the only reason we want to know. Uh, we'll pick one eligible email at random, and we'll announce it here on the show. And to make it easy for you, we have a picture of a big $50 Amazon card and the instructions on the top right yep. of our website at dmbull.com. Really easy to find. Mm-hmm. So go subscribe, like us, follow us, get your emails in so you can win that $50 gift card. That's right. And this is the last week to vote for us, Ray and Tom, mm. for Hottest Local Celebrity That's right. in Folio Weekly's 2013 Best of Jacks Contest. So we want you to vote. Make sure to vote for us. Go to folioweekly.com slash bestofjacks. And yes, we are trying to win Hottest Local Celebrity. Yes, and that is hilarious. <laughs> That's a real thing. But don't laugh. Don't We're laugh. We're really trying to win, okay? Go to folioweekly.com slash best of jacks and vote for Ray and Tom. Right. You can vote for us for other things too, but vote for Hottest Local Celebrity. I mean, best radio show, sure, but you know, Hottest who Local else, Celebrity. Who else were you going to vote for? Be honest. Exactly. No, no one. All right. Well, before we jump into your questions, we have a guest in the studio, Mike Khalil. Mike Khalil is the Saint Academy Coordinator at Sandalwood High School here in Jacksonville. Uh, welcome to the show, Mike. Oh, thank you. So tell us first, what does the Saint in Saint Academy stand for? I was looking at your logo, and it looks like most of the letters in Saint are in all caps. So is it an acronym? or what Actually, is, that? is um, the first year that uh, we started the Academy. Mm-hmm. It's an information technology academy, and we're actually the Sandalwood Saints, so it really ah. fit in well. It's a Sandalwood Academy of okay. Information Technology, so all the letters were there, so we decided to go with it. Awesome. Cool. And the N is lowercase because... Is information. information. It's information, yeah. Yeah, it didn't okay. fit perfect, but cool. you know. So what is an information technology academy? Well, uh, the one we have at Sandalwood, um, we actually recruit kids in from eighth grade, and they come in ninth grade, and they spend four years in our academy. Okay. And uh, the kind of the philosophy of this particular academy is that most ninth graders, they, they know that they like computers at that point if they're going to do that but they don't know necessarily what area of it they'd be best in so they actually take Mm. four different classes in their four years in high school they take a class that they learn windows os fundamentals and office and then they learn web develop or excuse me web design they learn uh, tech support and then they learn uh programming oh very cool very cool i would have loved that back in high school yeah i would enjoy that yeah it I really mean, is a neat opportunity for those kids. Yeah, absolutely. it really is. Cool. I think that's that's great uh, that you're teaching this at the high school level. I mean, yeah. You know, traditionally this has done all been done at, at the collegiate level. Yeah, it, that's actually very true, and that's kind of uh, why this this program is uh, has taken hold is to give kids a little bit more background before they get there. Yeah. Even if you look at uh, Microsoft. Um, 
a lot of people in the IT world are familiar with things like MCSC and MCSA and MCSD, all these right, the higher certifications. level certifications. Yeah. Now they have a lower level called uh, Microsoft Technology Associate, and that's some some of the things that we offer mm-hmm. uh, at the high school level. It's a more entry level and okay. gets them uh, ramped up. And we our goal, one of our goals is to get kids that are interested in the tech support side of things and A-plus certification, because okay. that's something that's... Um, it's difficult for a 17 or 18 year old to get without mm-hmm. full-time experience but something that's yeah. attainable and can get them a job okay oh, cool. very cool and I, I have heard of the a plus certification that's, that's standard for sort of the computer support kind of a uh, stuff right that's right if you do tech support like in the military you have to have a plus mm-hmm. um the best buy geek squad kind of people they're they're usually a plus certified okay we should get that certification um, we do tech support it's, I guess that's true. <laughs> you guys would definitely it. pass it. If yeah. you took you the test, so? yeah, yeah. Like, you probably wouldn't even have to study Do you think they just give us an honorary? I don't really want to take it. Could they, just, <laughs> could they just listen to the show and be like, you guys are good? Uh, <laughs> no? I think they want the test fee, unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> but, you know, uh, you guys would definitely pass it if you took well, how it. Much, how much is the fee for the, the certification? Do you know off uh, top of your head? I think it's somewhere around uh, 160 or 70 okay. for the Ooh. two tests. Yeah, That's it's, a, it's a, a steep fee. That's higher than some of the Microsoft certs. It, it it can be yeah, but it's just two tests, so it's a total of one seventy. Oh, okay. Um, the yeah, the Microsoft the MTA is actually only I think sixty nine dollars. Okay. So yeah, but uh, the sc- actually the school covers it. Oh, that's for cool. The kids. I was about to ask you. I was wondering yeah. if they did. Yeah. Okay. So what do you teach at the academy? I'm actually teaching uh, 10th through 12th graders over there. So I'm teaching okay. uh, web design, a tech support cool. networking class, and uh, the uh, programming class. We're actually in between the two. So mm-hmm. next year, we're going to have the kids going into programming. Mm-hmm. But okay. it's basically just the web in the internship class. That's okay. what I'm teaching. So they not only learn computers, they learn how to conduct themselves in a job interview. They learn how to dress appropriately, appropriately at work, yeah. um, how to write a resume, things like that. So it sounds like the the uh, the same Academy is mostly a vocational. You're trying to get them into jobs, or is it you're preparing them for college and and in the IT? It's uh, actually major. Both. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's actually both. It's uh, technically a vocational academy, mm-hmm. but uh, the direction of vocational schooling has really taken a, a turn, I think, for the better. Sure. Uh, in recent years. Um, you know, for a while, it was getting out of favor, and now people are realizing we need to have students that are trained in both uh, academics yeah. and in something that is practical. Okay. And so that's yeah. where that's what we try to do with this academy, and especially with something like IT, where you have to have very, you know, it, it takes an intelligent, logical thinker. Yeah. They have to be good at math. They have to be able to write and read well. They ha- mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we actually try to prepare them for college and prepare them for the workforce. Most of our kids actually go to college. Oh, very cool. Yeah, uh, I will say though, like uh, I personally don't have a problem with a vocational orient- orientation. At least my experience is that, well, experience counts for a lot yeah. in sure. IT Absolutely. all over the place. I know a lot of people who have uh, no college degree or half a college degree or whatever. Um, who are successful in various IT fields? <laughs> that would be that would be me. Yeah. <laughs> you know one. You know, person. and I remember uh, Mike and I full Half disclosure, a uh, worked together at an IT uh, company right. about ten years ago. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I remember uh, for a while I can't remember his name, but what the guy who was the technical director had a music degree. Huh. Yes, I do remember that. Yes, I do. <laughs> was you talking about John? Probably John Livingston. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 not not Livingston. Um. I presume. No, but he he was he was there in were golf war and he would always do these elaborate. I, I know who I'm you're sorry. talking about. It's been a long time, yeah. but I know who you're talking about. There are people with various degrees yes. in there, and the yeah, you're right. Experience is king, and that's yeah. and that's actually I'm glad you brought that up because um, that's actually one of the most important parts of the program is mm-hmm. that we have business partners like uh, EverBank and Bank mm-hmm. of America and, and oh, that's good companies yeah. like that in town, CSX cool. that offer our students internships, actually paid internships. Oh, that's great. Which is you know those we, are always those are, the best. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> get paid for your work yes I think so. and uh they're so supportive and uh you know but that's absolutely right and so we don't expect the kids to be experts in it by the time they get out i mean yeah. it takes years of working to become an expert but mm-hmm. uh, and even, we give them yeah even, even after you've been in it for years you still have to keep learning <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. i mean it's not a field that you can ever master the whole thing i know sure. all of computers mm. you can <laughs> up to the point where you stop learning and then you stop uh, being okay. the master that's of true. it right well, we just try to teach them how to learn you know yeah. how to research things 
things. You know, that this audience probably knows about XKCD and the mm. flow chart of how you how do you how to become the local computer expert. <laughs> and I actually sure. have yeah. that posted in my room, believe nice. it or not. Nice. So I, I will include that in the show notes for this episode. <laughs> that is and you know we should we should talk about that more often, XKCD's uh <laughs> flow chart. It's a great flow chart. So how to be a um, computer expert. How how do students get into the Saint Academy? Is it a magnet program? And even if it is, we might need to explain that a little bit for non Jacksonville listeners. It's sure. Um, it's uh, it's kind of like a magnet program. Okay. It's uh, but Sandalwood is a neighborhood high school. Mm-hmm. It is a program of study that uh, any student in the county can take part in if they decide to come. They would uh, an eighth grader or a parent of an eighth grader that's interested. Um, if they live in Sandalwood's district, all they have to do is let us know they're interested in being in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, by going to our website, sandalwoodhigh.org. Or um, if they are interested, if they live outside of Sandalwood's district and they're interested in our program, there's a program called School Choice that if uh, you're going to a school that does not offer the same program as us, and I think there's a very high chance of that because I think that our particular (laughs) program is one of the only ones in the county. Uh, It's the the, only one I've heard of, certainly. Yeah, yeah, there are other IT academies. Every school actually has some kind of tech-type academy, but I think our particular program is only one of maybe two Mm-hmm. Or three in the county. Okay. okay. So if you don't, if your school doesn't offer it, you can request with the school choice office downtown to to be part of this academy. Cool. And do they have to try out or anything or uh, audition in any way? Or? <laughs> there is an application process that okay. we ask they go they go through. Um, but um, basically, if they're if they're able to make it, um, if they're not completely, you know, we ask that they either are proficient in math or in reading, one of the mm. two, but we don't demand both okay. because we want them to have something to hang on to because it's not, right. you know, um, it's something that's very demanding as an elective. So sure. we want to make sure that they have something to hang on to and <laughs> set them up for success. So if they're proficient in one or the other, we give them a chance in ninth grade. Oh, cool. So how did this program begin? Or did, did have we asked you that yet? I don't how think did, we have. No, no. How did um, it begin? Actually, um, uh, uh, her name is Janie Roth. She was mm-hmm. the first director and uh, Vicki Schultz was our principal. She's she's actually our principal again now at Sandalwood. Mm-hmm. Um, they wanted to start an information technology academy at, at Sandalwood. And mm-hmm. funny enough, they I guess they knew I had a CIS degree, a computer information systems degree. Yeah. And so they... Um, they approached me about becoming the program coordinator, which okay. means basically lead teacher. So I teach right. a lot of the classes. And then, and so we did that year of planning. We uh, gathered together business partners. We tried to find teachers that had some actual technology experience, which you'd be okay. surprised to know there are teachers that have technology experience out there like, sure. like me, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so we try to get some experienced teachers in there. And, uh, fi- and then we find the kids who are interested okay. in, that, in that career path. Awesome. Um, so I understand that learning the, the, the program or not the programming as much until the later years. Um, but do the kids get to do this hands on or are they just learning the, in theory? Well, they do learn the theory. It's mm-hmm. important to know the vocabulary sure. and to know the language and to, you know, know how things are supposed to fit together in an academic sense, but it's definitely hands on as well. Okay. Um, the, the web class, I have the kids, um, find a local business or, or nonprofit that needs a website and have them do awesome. a small website That's cool. for them. Okay. Um, and the tech support class we have, the district actually got us a bunch of uh, bare bone systems for the kids to put together and take apart. Oh, I, nice. cool. Yeah, I let them build uh, <laughs> OSs on virtual machines, things like that. That's really, so. that's really great to hear because uh, a certain junior college, which will go unnamed, <laughs> um, I, I took some courses there and um, it was so frustrating because... There were hands-on work, yeah. but it was step by step, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And yeah, you're hands-on, but you're being led <laughs> you're being led by your hand to do every single step. And you're not really learning anything. You're just following the process. And uh, th- I mean, the final result was if your result matched what it's supposed to look like, then you did it right. Right. And there's really no learning in that. It's just mm-hmm. following. Can you follow steps? Right, which is great if you're trying to put something together, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, in in learning IT, a lot of it is just trying things out 
and figuring out how to do it while you're doing it. Absolutely. And it's so, and in fairness to uh, the junior college, yeah. I, I run into some of the same frustrations because it's really hard to, to break something yeah. in a way that, you know, it, that you can just give it to the kid. And because you have to break it for, you know, 30 kids, not just sure. for one. So it's a hard thing to do. But uh, at the same time, that's uh, try to find creative ways around that. Yeah. For example, mm-hmm. we're offering tech support to teachers in the, in oh, yeah. the school. Cool. And so uh, if they want to bring in their uh, their computers or their iPads, whatever, and yeah. kind of infringing on your territory. That's there. okay. <laughs> That's okay. So, we uh, we don't have offer a... tech support uh, live. We don't. Yeah. We can't. We can't touch your stuff. That's true. <laughs> we always say we'll get it out to the small businesses and programs like yours. That's fantastic. So if the teachers at Santa would have a problem, they actually uh, can call a number and get a surly teenager on the line because that's a lot like real life. <laughs> that would be very realistic if we yeah. had phones at all their desks. That would be awesome. Uh, yeah, they uh, unfortunately, they filter through me. So I can be pretty surly, though. So, okay. I mean, there's okay. that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Have you tried turning it off and on? I'm sorry. <laughs> So what what are the benefits for the students? I mean, other than just, you know, getting the knowledge, how do they benefit from this? Well, um, I think uh, I think it's really neat that they get to go to things like career fairs. They get to meet okay. uh, people in the community. Um, we have people. Uh, people are really a- uh, eager to help out programs like this because they're so new and it's mm-hmm. been a need for so long and it hasn't been filled. Yeah, it's one in the industry. I can tell you, like, Everyone's always desperate for reliable IT workers. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Every business. Right. And the earlier they start, the better. And so people really have gotten in line to, to help us out, which is really nice. And so we have people, you know, directors of IT for for CSX and, you know, vice presidents of Bank of America and Everbank that are asking to, you know, speak to our kids. Oh, nice. About That's the cool. about the what it takes yeah. to be to to have the careers that they want to have. Um, and uh, we have different colleges come in. We have uh, field trips that we go out to. We get to let them see, you know, firsthand. I mean, that's something that you can't get from a from just a, a regular course. Sure. You know, it's just mm-hmm. something that's really neat. That that it's just a program that they've set in place. That uh, that is, it's like I said, it's new. It's yeah. something they haven't done and they haven't done, and uh, it's just very exciting for these kids to be able to just see how it really works yeah, out in the totally. real world. Now, school starts tomorrow. Yes, it does. <laughs> so obviously, nobody could enroll in it right now. Um, if or if, can students get involved right now? If they're a student at Sandalwood. Mm-hmm. They could conceivably get it. Actually, you know, if there happens to be any yeah. parents or any Sandalwood students that that are hearing this, um, mm-hmm. I'm Mike Khalil. I'm in room 101 at Sandalwood. Okay. The student can come by or just talk to a guidance counselor. Awesome. Um, but for next year, mm-hmm. um, that's definitely a thing. Now, now is the time to start thinking about if you're in eighth grade. There are all kinds of programs yeah. all over the county that uh, if you're not if you're IT, you might want to come to Sandalwood. If you're not IT or you uh, want to do, you know. There's a lot of digital media programs out there. There's sure. lots of uh, 3D animation, like Atlantic Coast has a 3D animation um, academy. Um, there's all, everything under the sun. Duval County has it now. Yeah, there's so. so many cool programs. When I was in high school, I mean, there was there yeah, was we had there typing. was Stanton, <laughs> right? There was Stanton. <laughs> there was DA, you know, for arts and uh, right. Uh, if if I hadn't gone to DA, I probably would have dropped out. But uh, <laughs> I, I would have loved to have had a program like this. Uh, yeah, when. I was in 11th grade. I actually made Douglas Harrison's website. That really dates us. That's awesome. <laughs> nice. Because nobody else took the initiative to make a website for DA. But you laid the was foundation that, was that for, for later. Uh, no, it was on, it was on <laughs> Comcast uh, personal home server. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Really great. <laughs> that's awesome. But yeah, no, that's... It, it definitely had an different. animated GIF of uh, someone with a construction sign. <laughs> <laughs> Every site in the mid-90s had yeah, that, in yeah. the late 90s. Good but time. that's actually what you're talking about. Yeah. That's the importance of programs like this sure. as well, is it gives kids, uh, gives kids an opportunity opportunity to know what they're good at and to sure. do what they're good at and yeah. because people I mean most kids don't come and I'm, I'm a math teacher by background mm-hmm. in teaching okay. so don't take me the wrong way but most kids don't go to school because they love math right. or because <laughs> they love true. English they go sure. because they love music or drama or sports yeah. or in this case computers maybe you know because mm-hmm. I think it's, it's I've seen that that's one of yeah. the things that kids can hold on to 
the extracurricular type of stuff. Yeah, that's nice because you definitely have those kids in high school too who are really into computers, you know, right. and uh, they would be glued to a computer all day if that's if they could have their uh, their choice. And you guys are <laughs> giving them the ability to do something productive with that and yeah. get their wish. Absolutely. So. All right. Well, we've got to take a break. Um, uh, you can stick around and help us answer some questions, or you can head out of here. What do you want to do? I'll, I'll put stick you on the around spot. for a segment. All or right. Something. Cool. Oh, before we go to break, um, let me ask you: Where can people find out more information about Sand Academy? They can go to sandalwoodhigh.org. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, like I said, we have to take a quick break. Uh, so, but when we come back, we have answers to your questions. We have a debunkable segment, Ooh. and we finally have a name for the app segment. So. It's it can be exciting. <laughs> You're listening to Deemable Tech. Welcome back to Deemable Tech. So we have a question that we answered a long time ago. It's a very old question, but I'm not sure that we ever told the listener the answer. Oh, uh, yeah. It, it might have been before we had our current kind of a yeah, support we, system. Yeah, we have a really great system now called Zendesk where all, whenever your emails, your voicemails come in, they all go to this one central location and we can answer them there and yeah. keep track of it. But before, we didn't have that. So I, I think we answered it. We stuck it in our, our Google Drive folder and we may have talked about it on the show. I'm not sure because she sent me an email mm -hmm. and I started looking for it. And I couldn't find the question in our previous show notes. Huh. And she didn't know the answer. So I figured let's answer it again. Okay. We already did, we already did the research. So yeah. this is an easy one. Uh, yeah, there you go. All right. Well, I'll read it. Mallory writes, I was recently given the opportunity of updating my system. This is her, her Android phone. Mm -hmm. uh, she's got a Galaxy S3. Ever since, whenever I send text messages, post on Facebook or even write on the S note, my text all of a sudden gets erased. It's similar to a control A action, but I don't perform this step. Also, my Google keyboard fails after a number of selections on the predictive messages. I think if I select five to six words, it'll stop working. None of these things ever happened when I was using the, using the phone prior to the Jelly Bean update. So it's <laughs> something wrong with Jelly Bean. Interesting. She thinks. Uh, okay. Well, first of all, Mallory, I have a question for you. Hello, IT. Yeah. Have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> Sorry. We just like to slip that in there. Right we now. love the IT crowd. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. The number one thing I would try with this is to reset your phone if you haven't yeah. done that already. Um, and all you got to do to do that is just hold down the power button while the phone is on. And then when the device options pop up, uh, appears, select reset and let the phone do its thing. And now... With Android, that's always a good solution. But actually, with anything, yeah. it's always a good yeah. solution. Try that first. Yeah. I mean, every uh, Windows, Mac, iOS, Android. Yeah, I will say with the S3, like uh, back when I had my Droid X, like I reset it for everything. I'd get out an app, reset it. Yeah. Um, the, the S3, I have to do that <laughs> wow, a lot that's... less. But in this case, I would go ahead and try it. Yeah. Um, and uh, Actually, right before the show started, my Chromebook froze up, and I had to turn it off and on again. You crashed a Chromebook. That's, I crashed that's kind of amazing. That's impressive. That's, <laughs> I am talented. <laughs> um, that might be a record. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, so try resetting it. The second thing to do, if that does not clear it up, um, if you're using a keyboard other than the default keyboard on your phone, um, you can go to that. They, all the keyboards actually have applications, and you can go to the application under Settings, Application Manager, and you can actually clear the cache. And that's uh, the cache is just sort of, all the temporarily stored data, including your auto-suggest uh, you know, preferences. It analyzes right. word frequency and does some things like that. So try clearing out that cache if, again, you're using something other than the default keyboard. Um, that will delete all the data stored with the keyboard. And if there's corrupt data, which is what might be causing this, that will get rid of it. 
Um, if none of these solutions work, you may need to try using a different keyboard app. Now, mm. Android phones are different from iPhones in that they allow you to change what keyboard you're using, and these keyboards are basically apps. Yeah. There are a couple uh, pre-installed on your Samsung Galaxy S3. Um, if you're on the home screen and you hit the menu button and go to settings and then find language and input, you can actually change what keyboard is enabled and you can select your default keyboard from this menu. Okay. You can also download alternate keyboards. Um, there are some good ones out there. There's a couple popular keyboard apps, um, SwiftKey and the Google Keyboard. The Google Keyboard, you might be like, well, it's already a Google phone. That's true, but they don't all come with a Google Keyboard. Uh, what is the difference between the Google Keyboard and the Android Keyboard? Uh, you know, they sometimes have like slightly different uh, button layouts. Oh. Um, um, uh, they have different little features. Now, SwiftKey is pretty cool, though. SwiftKey, SwiftKey is, is very awesome. cool. I love SwiftKey. What, is, what does SwiftKey do? It's been a while since I've seen it. I can't have it, so. <laughs> yeah, you can. Oh, my that's iPhone. fine. That's fine. I yeah. don't want to steal your no, thunder. Go for no, it. no. Oh, no. Um, it uh, has the ability to check your um, your Gmail, mm -hmm. your text messages, your Ooh. Twitter, how, just oh. how the kinds of words. It, it yeah, analyzes it analyzes the, the word frequencies from all the use, applications yeah. you use all the time. So it's per personalized to how you type. Yeah. So just and it's really is, neat. It has the, well, a lot of keyboards have it now, but um, SwiftKey is a very good implementation of the swipe kind of methodology yeah. where you trace the words out without lifting your finger. Yeah, if there's one thing that I'm jealous of you Android people about is the uh, the alternate keyboards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, hoping, I'm hoping one day, one day Apple will finally back down on that. You'd probably like to put your uh, Dvorak out there or whatever. Yeah, Col Colmac. <laughs> Colmac. I like the Colmac Sorry, keyboard Colmac. layout. He is, <laughs> he's like a keyboard hipster. Over Dever here. Dvorak is the cool keyboard layout. Col Colmac is the hipster keyboard layout. Oh, okay. okay. These are these are different keyboard layouts that you can do on your <laughs> on your computer. Uh, if you could see my keyboard, it doesn't say QWERTY across the top. It says Quifipisigbisgli. That just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> yep. Long, uh, long story behind it, but for another episode. Anyways, back to keyboards. Uh, yeah. So there's Swift Key, there's Google Keyboard, and uh, as as Mike said, I would also recommend the Swift Key app. Um, it's great. It costs two bucks, but it's amazing. Uh, I highly recommend it. So, you know, try that out, and hopefully just using a different keyboard app will fix your problem. So, to sum up, yeah. uh, try rebooting the phone. Exactly. If that doesn't work, clear the cache for your keyboard app under the application manager, and if you're still having problems, try a different keyboard. Yep, those are my suggestions. Cool. Now, I'll be honest, uh, Mallory's problem is kind of a weird one. Mm -hmm. um, if none of those work, it might be an issue with the phone itself, and you may need to take it back to the store. Um, but before you get to that nuclear option, uh, try these things. So yeah. anyone, could anyone she try to add like, to this? Can she flash the, the OS? I don't know how Android does it. Uh, she could reset back to factory default. Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's like kind the, of a nuclear option. Too. Yeah. yeah. That's like the preemptive nuclear option right. <laughs> yeah, I, before the store. That's true. Uh, if nothing else, and they, and they can help you with that in the store too. If you can't figure out how to do that, um, on your own, but yeah, you can always reset back to your factory defaults. Um, All right. Because, yeah, that's that's a strange problem, and it's not one I've really seen. Yep. So, Well, Mallory, give it a shot and let us know how it works. Yeah, okay. let us know, please. All right, so we have a debunkable segment. Sweet. And we don't have a debunkable sound to go with it. That's okay. <laughs> debunkable. That's all right. So wow, we amazing, have been Sean. seeing. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. This is what happens when you don't tell your producer beforehand about stuff that's going to happen. And you expect them to read your mind. Yeah. He usually can do a really good job of reading my <laughs> mind, but, you know, not always. So we've been seeing this a lot on Facebook, and we had to investigate it. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes, warning, if you, your kids, or grandkids take pics from your phone, watch this. In all caps. Watch In all this. caps. It's got to be all <laughs> caps. Uh, this is truly alarming. Please take the time to watch. At the end, they'll tell you how to set your phone so you don't run this risk. More all caps. Please pass this info to anyone you know who takes pictures with their cell or smartphone and posts them online. Okay, so it's a lot of a lot of this uh, really excited <laughs> energy um, in all caps. Uh, so we saw this. A few of our friends posted it on Facebook. And anytime that something is so important that you have to put over a paragraph in all caps, we got to watch it. We got to mm -hmm. find out what this is about. So here's a clip from that video. Well, if you've got a smartphone and even once posted an online picture, you need to know about a new threat. This is something new technology can allow hackers to track down you and your kids, even from a simple email. Russ. 
Mark and Elizabeth, the technology allows strangers to cherry pick from online pictures posted all over the web and then find the home, work, or even school of that person okay. in the pic. All right, let's pause it right there. First of all, uh, you can listen to the whole video. I'll, I'll include a link in the show notes. This is not new technology, okay? No, no definitely uh, not. This has been around for quite a few years. Um, it, it, it goes back at least as far as, as far as I know, at least goes back to the first iPhone, okay? The video itself is actually from 2010, so it's at least three years old. Second of all, no, they cannot find your home, <laughs> your work, or even your school of the person in the pic, okay? This is just classic news, and, and you know, we're kind of part of the media too, but I hate this. Local news, and even, even national news, it's just fear-mongering, okay? What happens is you get a journalist who finds out about a, a story, usually from a tech site, mm -hmm. where they're like, hey... Be aware, this could happen. And then a local news or, or maybe sometimes national news, they're like, oh my gosh, we have to do a feature about this. And they just scare people to death. And I imagine it drives ratings. Yeah. Probably. I know the one time we've done a story that was kind of fear mongering, mm -hmm. we got a lot of traffic from it. So I guess it worked. It was something you should actually be concerned about. Yeah, that I mean, was uh, disabling Java. Yes, that was actually know, a big and, deal. And it is a very real vulnerability, but at the same time, you know, we don't want to yeah. freak people right. out just so that they'll come visit our website. We're, we're not going to tell you that, you know, Java is going to hunt your children down. Yeah. <laughs> For sport. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and I'll say, you know, that was, our thing was a legitimate concern. And this actually is a legitimate concern. It's something you should be aware of, but they're blowing it way out of proportion. Yeah, I, this, it's one of those things where it's got a grain of truth. Grain of truth, right. And that is always the best urban legend, okay? So here's the thing. If you have what's called geotagging turned on on your smartphone, basically it stores the location of where you took that photo in the data in the photo. So usually when you take a, a photo with your camera or with your smartphone, it saves a lot of information. What camera it was taken on, when it was taken, uh, what resolution, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And one of the things it can do is store the latitude and longitude that you're located at. Okay. And if you want to know a geek term, that's called metadata. Metadata, right. Thank you. Uh, so geotagging is actually a really great feature. It's not the scariest thing in the world, okay? It can be really great. So, you know, have you ever p pulled a picture out of, like, your attic or a shoebox and you wondered, hey, where was that taken? Mm -hmm. There's no way to know with an old Polaroid or, or an old, uh, old picture. But with geotagging, you don't have to wonder. It tells you where it was taken. So with some apps, so there's actually some really great iOS apps that you can pull out and it'll show you all your pictures on a map where they were taken. Uh, so you can kind of, like, revisit your vacation or revisit your road trip. It's kind of cool. So... Yes. Okay. If you take pictures in your bedroom or in a park or in school or your, at your work, then yes, somebody know, who knows how to take GPS coordinates and figure out where that's located on a map could figure out where that picture was taken. Not necessarily who was in the picture, because I could take a picture of Mike. It's not his all. It's not his work, even though it's here at WJCT. They just know that Mike was at WJCT at some so, point. At some point in his life. <laughs> um, and the thing is, most people don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, most stalkers and creeps don't know how to do that. But, oh, the good folks at 41 Action News made sure that the creeps know how to do it. Oh, <laughs> I thought he had the... <laughs> See, this is, again, this is where you communicate. Well, something else that related to that, if... I, I... At the two-minute mark. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Something else related to that is that it would only be in, you know, if you're sending somebody that entire original picture. Right. If you upload it to Facebook or you upload it, uh, you'll uplo upload a video to YouTube, it's not the original video, so that metadata is not even going to be in there. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Facebook actually strips out basically all, virtually all metadata, um, right. which annoys the heck out of photographers I discovered when I was researching this. <laughs> there's a whole there's a whole website where people were complaining about this, but you can see they do it for obvious privacy concerns, you know. Right. right. Um, but they strip out the metadata. So even if you have, uh, and this is something you can turn off and on, which we'll talk about in a minute, but even if you have it turned on, it's got the GPS location of where the photo was taken, and you upload it to Facebook, that information's not there anymore. Yeah, it used to be a long time ago, but now it is stripped out. Here, let's hear that, that clip there. 
where they explain. Exactly where it is. Mehdi shows how free, easily obtained browser add-ons can translate that data into maps. Well, exactly that spot where that picture was taken. The site ICanStalkYou.com reposts pics <laughs> from unwitting Twitter users in real time, translating their photos into actual addresses and maps. The site also has a how-to. So yeah, so. Uh, Ironically, prior to this news, well, I'll come back to IcanStalkYou.com. It's actually a good site. Um, <laughs> I use it all the time. So yeah, so ironically, even though most folks wouldn't know how to do that, now thanks to Action Action Forty One or Forty One Action News, now you know that you can download an easy app or a, a browser extension to to find mm -hmm. that information out. But actually, what we were talking about ICanStalkU.com. It's I can stalk in the letter U. It's actually a great site with good information on how to disable geotagging services on your smartphone. What it was is some nerdy person like us figured out, you know, hey, I could go on Twitter, download pictures, and take the metadata from it and figure out where these people were. Mm -hmm. So they would download the pictures and then tweet it back to the person and say, oh, you're at so-and-so. And it would really freak them out. So, again, you know, geotagging, if you're not aware of it, yeah, you should probably be aware of it. Um, and but if virtually every application, uh, whether on the web or on your phone, that uses the geotagging asks you before it turns it on. That's For instance, right. You can geotag your tweets. But Twitter, yeah. you have to turn that on like, right. intentionally. A lot of people, though, you know, just like anything else, they just go click, 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 and yeah, don't, don't read it. So, the, the, same th the same thing with phones, though. I think uh, most phones, uh, by default, uh, and just going off anecdotal evidence, yeah. I don't know this for sure, but I think by default most of them do not have geotagging on. I'm not sure if that's true. Does the do you know with the iPhone? I think that it's on by default, but I'm, okay. if you if you accept location services, okay, then it is. Which, speaking of which, if you do want to disable location services on your phone, it's really easy to do. Here's how to do it on your iPhone: just open up the settings, and then go down to privacy, and tap on location services. Then you're going to see a whole list of location services. I don't know if you can see this in the video, but you can if you are able to. All you're going to do is scroll down to camera and turn the little button off. I've got mine on because I like geotagging because I like to know where I took the pictures at. But you can t turn it off if you like. You can turn off all your location services, but then none of your location services like your maps will work. So right. you don't want to do that. That's the thing. Uh, the and two, with this uh, website, people were talking about oh, disable location services. If you don't disable location services entirely, maps will not work for right. you. Um, nothing, nothing, nothing location that, based. Will yeah, work. find your location will work. So probably that's uh, kind of the nuclear option, and you don't need to do it that way because virtually every phone allows you to disable this at the camera level. How will you do it in, in, on Android? So in Android, to disable location services, you're going to go to your main settings, which usually you do by going to the the desktop and hitting settings. Um, and then just scroll down, and under personal, you'll find location services. And there you can turn it on and off. Do you have, what about for individual apps, like just the camera app? Right, so uh, you can totally do individual apps. And this will depend, uh, with Android, almost every phone has its own camera app. Okay. Um, it's not very standardized, but you should be able to go into the app and go to your settings. So there might be like a little uh, gear icon you tap, okay. or some of them you swipe in from the side. Um, on mine, you just go into the camera app and then hit the settings, the hard button. Okay. And uh, you should see something in there that says something along the lines of uh, store GPS or store location. Yeah. And it, you can just turn it off. Okay. So there you go. It's not too hard to turn it off. Um, and again, like I said, it's it's a mildly something to be concerned about, something to be aware of. Something to be nothing, aware of, yeah, definitely. Nothing for you to be really scared of. Because unfortunately, the reality is it's a lot easier for a kidnapper or worse to just grab a kid. I, I haven't heard of any cases at all where this has been done, where like someone's actually taken advantage of this to harm a child, usually the attacker is actually known to the child or it's just a random act of violence. So while it's smart to be aware of what information you are inadvertently posting about your child that could possibly be used to harm him or her, it isn't something that should invoke terror in your heart, okay? It's really not that dangerous. And, and to be clear again, because like the, the whole... Uh action news segment made it sound like someone takes one look at one of your photos and can yes. track you. And that's not no. how it works. It 
All it is is the location the photograph was taken at. Literally at that moment at that when it moment, was taken. You know, they cannot That's look it. at the photo and know where that person is right now. That's what drove me crazy <laughs> when he was like, home, work, or even school. No. I mean, if you took pictures <laughs> the only thing of all those find things out. and then uploaded yeah. them somewhere other than Facebook that allows GPS tagging. Yeah. The reporter, and that's something to keep in mind with anything sure. technology related is yeah. that you can do almost anything, but it's, it's a matter of how easy is it to do it. Exactly. It's yeah. not necessarily available to, yeah, the, to the be repo- done. The reporter in the story, they literally gave an iPhone to her and her daughter, and they literally took pictures everywhere with geotagging on intentionally <laughs> and then went and, and, you know, oh, well, this is where their school is. This is where, oh, her bedroom. Like, I was like, you know... <laughs> okay, but don't don't get crazy about it. So, anyways, there you go. So, yes, there's an ounce of truth, but for the most part, eh, it's nothing to worry about. Yeah. Just turn it off if you don't want your geotagging on. Or choose when you have it on. That always works, too. Mm-hmm. All right, well, we got another question. Uh, let's see. It's about an iPad. Can you read that one? Sure. My son recently gave his mother an iPad 4 as a birthday gift he bought earlier this year because he wanted an iPad mini instead. Oh. Uh, what's the best way to delete all his data and accounts on the iPad 4 without him losing all his saved email, contacts, iTunes, apps, etc.? Both iPads are still registered under his account. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. I always tell people when you get a new iPad or a new iPhone or iPod Touch, use the same account because you don't have to buy apps twice. Mm-hmm. Um, so his email, most likely, I'm assuming he's probably using something like Gmail or Yahoo Mail or, or Outlook.com, something like that, where it's online anyway. So even if he loses it on his iPad, it's okay. You're not going to lose. He's not going to literally lose his email. He's going to have to sign in on his new account. Um, but the easiest way to do it is to go into the iPad that is needing to be cleared out. Go to the Settings app and click General, and then click Reset, and then click Erase All Content and Settings. Wait, don't do it yet. <laughs> Hang on, this is the nuclear option, okay? So you want to make sure, I would do a backup of the iPad first, just in case. Mm -hmm. Make sure all the pictures are taken off of there. Make sure, I would actually back up the contacts, sync it with iTunes first. Because his contacts most likely will go, depending on how he has it set up. Like if he's using Gmail, it actually backs it up to Gmail. Same thing with Yahoo. But it depends on what you're using. So I'd make sure that your contacts are synchronized first with iTunes. So before you do that, boot up your computer and sync it with your computer over the cable. It's going to be the fastest if you haven't done it in a while. Do that first and then go into the iPad and then settings general, reset, and erase all contents and settings. That will completely wipe it out. Everything will be gone. It'll be like a brand new iPad. Now mm-hmm. I'll take care of it. Yep. Yep. And, you know... Um iPads and, and tablets and smartphones generally, you know, uh, if you throw your old PC out, the problem is the hard drive, even right. though it's erased, can still technically have the data on it. But iPads and tablets in general, they use a different type of memory. They use uh, solid coming. state. Yeah, solid, solid state, state memory. Thank you. And you need it, to keep it, Mike around. I know. <laughs> solid state. Yeah, he's like the rest of my brain. Um, <laughs> That's missing. Yeah, so solid state isn't doesn't work the same way as a magnetic tape hard drive does, and it won't uh, store old saved stuff that should be deleted. So there's yeah. really no problem. Once you do the wipe, you're good. Yeah, I mean, it can't. The data can be recovered, but again, it's much harder. It's it's very hard. Yeah, um, it's going to take the whole cast of CSI. Yeah, <laughs> if you're you know wanted in multiple countries or you have ties to international espionage, then, then maybe you need to take some extra destroy work. Destroy it, the <laughs> iPad, and get a new secret laser powered iPad or something. But if that's not you, you don't need to worry about that. Yep. All right. So for the longest time, we have been doing this segment that we have never had a name for. Yeah, it's a segment about apps. It's a segment about apps. So we've never we've we've tried to come up. What we've had some terrible ideas. Appable was mm-hmm. one of them. Um, tap that app was mm-hmm. another one. Um, an app a day was the I think the worst one of all. But we finally <laughs> have a name for the app segment. We even have a stinger for it. Yes, am I getting a nod from Sean? Yes, we do. Okay, we have a not a, a stinger for it. The segment is now called. Got a drum roll? Can you do a drum roll? No. Nope. Ah, I'm just. I'm. I'm. There we go. It's called downloadable. 
You've got apps. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our stinger. Yes. All right. So uh, in this segment, we just talk about the apps that we've been into the last week. So, Mike, if you got one, uh, think about it while I'm le- I'll let Tom talk. Think about what your app that you want to talk about, if you got one. Not to, press- not to put right. you under pressure. I was, I, I'll think about it. But, Tom, you're the most prepared, so uh, what you got this week? <laughs> Thanks. Um, all right. Uh, it's a nice change of pace. That's right. Ooh. <laughs> oh, burn. <laughs> well, Ray, I've been very busy running. Oh, okay. Which is why sometimes I'm not prepared. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I do run, and I recently found a cool app. Of course, you may be familiar with the Couch to 5K program, which is sort of a running program yes. uh, that gets you running uh, a 5K within about six weeks. And they have a very nice app for that. Um, it's called Couch to 5K. Uh, and there's a few apps, at least in the Android uh, play market. There's that, a bazillion on iPhone. This one is yeah. definitely the best. Um, but this one is kind of official, and it's from Active.net. So yep. look for Couch to 5K and get the one from the developer, Active.net. Um, it's available on the iPhone and Android, as Ray just said. Uh, and the nice thing about it is it really, like, the program itself is great. It sets very achievable goals and a very... A realistic schedule that I think most people will be able to hit. Yeah, um, it just basically starts you off. Uh, you don't start you off at five running five k or anything like that. It just starts you off sort of alternating running and walking, and the app will tell you when to walk and when to run. And you know it starts off doing like a minute and a half running, a minute and a half walking back and forth, and then it starts to slowly uh, extend the amount of time that you're running. Um, and uh, you know it. It's a pretty nice little app. It's it's fairly straightforward. It's uh it can play random songs from a playlist of your choosing while you're running. So you've got your music. Um, you can customize the voice of the uh the person that's telling you when to walk and run. Um, I I use the default lady. She's very encouraging. <laughs> yeah, they have like a drill sergeant yeah. and a uh, oh, really? uh it's like a a mom I think, <laughs> and somebody who recently finished her first five k. Oh, nice. And then some really, uh, I don't know how to describe it, like Michelle Rodriguez type character, <laughs> this chick who's really Nine like cents. no nonsense and just like, let's go, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you got a lot of options there. Um, and it tracks your route. Oh, and the zombie. the zombie. There's a zombie, yes. Really? There's a zombie coach, too. That one's the best. <laughs> uh, that would be appropriate for my shirt, which uh, I don't know if you can see it on the camera there. Shamble, Shamble to the to cure. The cure. <laughs> zombie 5K. That's right. That's great. Was that a real run? No. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, there are zombie <laughs> runs, but I don't think any of them involve actual zombies like this shirt. They should. Yes. They should involve actual zombies. Um, anyways, back to the app. And it, <laughs> uh, it tracks your route on a map. Uh, it logs each session. Um, and an interesting thing is, uh, the other day I had just finished my run, gotten home, and it all of a sudden, uh, it uses the location settings, which we were just talking about. Mm-hmm. It pops up uh, a suggestion. It's like, there's a 5K that will be run after you finish this program in your area. Would you like to register? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I was like, oh, I, I, I decided not to. Uh, I decided I would pick my own 5K. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's kind of clever. And the thing is, Active.net, um, they actually are the back end for a lot of the various races and running programs. Awesome. Um, they provide the back end. So they actually have sort of, I'm sure, a pretty good database of what, you know, run activities are going on in your area. So yeah. um, it yeah. can Here at Jacksonville is a very active running community. Yeah. It is. You could run a 5K pretty much every weekend if you want to. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. I, um, I, I've actually used it as well. Um, I used it twice. <laughs> uh, I went running with you one time. <laughs> and right. uh Managed to tear my uh, what's it called the the arch of my foot, Ooh. so I was out for a few weeks. He was. Do you remember uh, when I limping. showed up to uh, that that play rehearsal, Godspell rehearsal, yeah, yeah. with uh, in crutches? Oh, That's yeah. what happened to me. Oh, good job. Street Bridge yeah. uh, during uh, nice. the River Run. Oh, Ooh. yeah. That's a tough one. All right. Well, I have an app. It's called. It this is a jailbreak app, so you have to be jailbroken to use this app. Uh, but I thought I would throw a jailbreak a jailbreak app out there. I'm housebroken. Does that count? <laughs> no, it's only for iPhone. It's called Wi-Fi Fofum. <laughs> Wi-Fi Fofum. Yeah, it's really great. It lets you see all of the Wi-Fi networks in your area. And more than just that, actually, it'll show you the MAC addresses of the routers. Uh, it'll give you an idea of how far away the routers are from you, which that's what I really love is the map, the little radar oh. map that shows you <laughs> how far away you are from the router. Because one of the things that drives me crazy is, especially when I'm trying, like I'm at the airport or something, I'm trying to get on the Wi-Fi in a public mm-hmm. area, and you have no idea where that antenna is. So with this, it gives you, it's, it doesn't do the directions, it's really just distance from you. 
but it also can tell where the other ones are. So it does kind of triangulate it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, it gets, gets you an idea of, okay, this is where you're at. This is where the router is. Go that direction to get a better signal, which is kind of cool. The reason I downloaded it is because I was having trouble at home on my Wi-Fi router. But you know where your router is. I do know where my router is, yes. <laughs> yeah. But Surprise what I me, didn't honey. know is I didn't know what channel all the other routers in my neighborhood that were bl bleeding over onto my Wi-Fi, uh, okay. what channel they were on. So I was able to see what channel they're using and oh, change nice. the channel. Nice. So I could get on a free Wi-Fi channel or a clear Wi-Fi channel. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and it also will uh, log uh, Wi-Fi that's near you so you can see where there's free Wi-Fi around you. Yeah. That's kind of cool. It's a good app. That's very cool. That's Unfortunately, idea. it's only for jailbreaking, jailbroken phones um, or jailbroken iPads. So, But it's one of those things where it's actually worth jailbreaking for, mm -hmm. in my opinion. So what else you got? For Android, uh, well, uh, I'm, let me put a game out there. We don't talk games too much. Yeah. Uh, I discovered this one last week, and it's just it's really good. Um, you know, cell phone games are cell phone games typically. Sure. You got your Angry Birds and whatever. Um, but I thought this one kind of stood out to me as a quality game that I was like, that would even be a cool game on a computer. Um, it's called Rhymed Capsule. Uh, what? <laughs> I'll spell that for you. It's R Y M D K A P S E L. I'm looking at it. It still doesn't make it any yeah. better. Uh, it's Swedish. Capsule. It's Swedish. I believe it's Swedish for space capsule. Oh, okay. Um, it's actually a strategy game. It's kind of a combination uh, real-time strategy game slash tower defense game. Um, what you do is you have these uh, tiny rectangular minions, and they are on sort of a space station constructed out of Tetris blocks. And you are building the space station out with the hmm. minions. And what you're trying to do is you're attempting to reach and to research these four mysterious monoliths that are sort of on the edge of the map. And you're also trying to fend off successive waves of laser blasting aliens ah. while you do that. So, um, and it's just really engrossing. It's a nice little sort of resource management strategy game. Um, it's a uh, $3.99, but there's no free to play gimmickry. They're not trying to sell you costumes or anything. Uh, <laughs> and it'll give you three to five hours of super addictive gameplay. And I really liked it and you should Very check cool. it out. Very cool. All right, uh, I've got one more. Uh, it's called, <laughs> this one's kind of fun. It's called Dream Talk Recorder. Okay, now, so, when you mentioned this, I was like, so is that like you put it by your pillow if you talk in your sleep and it's going to record what you... You just called it. That's exactly oh, what okay. it does. Uh, it is a basically a voice recorder that is uh, sound activated and you can adjust the sensitivity. So if you have like a fan or blowing. So if you ever wondered if you talk in your sleep or if you snore in your sleep or whatever. Or if you're having a spousal I have a argument. That, but, you, know. <laughs> you have a wife for that? <laughs> She'll See? tell me exactly yeah. what I said. I was about to say, if you're having an argument with your spouse about how, how much that those activities happen. <laughs> you know, I honestly wondered if Amber <laughs> snored in her sleep. That was, I was really curious about. Because, uh, you know, she's snored a few times, and I, and I snore sometimes too. But uh, I, we tried it out a couple of nights, and uh, surprisingly... Uh, mostly it was just turning over in bed, you know, the creak <laughs> of the bed or whatever. We didn't snore much that night. Y did you um, talk? No, no, no talking uh. at all. Um, but there is a really fun feature where you can go to the world tab and other people submit their recordings. Oh, so if nice. they have a really humorous, you know, something <laughs> that they say in, the sli in their sleep, you can listen to them. That's so very cool. It's a really fun app. It's uh, I think it's 99 cents. So not, not, not going to break the bank with that one. Um, but if you ever wondered, you know, do you snore? Do you talk in your sleep? Hmm. Check out Dream Talk Recorder. Mike, what about you? You got any apps? Okay, I'm hoping this isn't incredibly lame, but this is okay. something. This is something of short notice, because so sure, yeah. I was actually using it on the way here. We all know about Netflix. We all know about YouTube. On, uh -huh. You know, to have a little bit of entertainment on our on our phones and our uh, tablets. And this is Android, by the way. Okay. Um, I actually uh, I have a subscription to uh, MLB TV. Okay. If you're a baseball fan, it's uh, some like seventy nine dollars a year, and you get every uh, baseball game. Uh, that basically broadcast the entire season. Okay. And so on my way here, actually, I was listening to the Pirates lose in extra innings to the Diamondbacks uh -huh. <laughs> uh, through Bluetooth on, uh, but with MLB at bat. So it's a, okay. actually a, a, a client for Android that I'm sure is also available. On. It is. Yeah, it's yeah. available on iPhone as well. Right. I just looked it up. So, uh, yeah. yeah, so it's something that lets you uh, listen or watch. You can even watch the oh, game cool. on, your, on your phone. Ideally not while you're driving. Yeah, not while you're driving. I was. I had the. I, I had the audio feature on. <laughs> so but they even have a uh, closed captioning on there too. On that the, on I the did video. not know. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Well, they do on Android. Uh, I, don't know. Uh, I mean, on iPhone. Uh, so I'm assuming they probably have it on Android as well. I would imagine they would. Yeah. Mike, I went on a road trip with our old boss one time, mm -hmm. and um, 
I don't remember what he was watching, but he had, and this was cutting edge at the time because this was 10 years ago, but he had a <laughs> laptop that could play DVDs or something. Mm -hmm. And he was watching some TV show while he was driving. And I was like, are you sure this is a good idea? Oh, yeah, it's fine. I just look occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. Don't do that. Don't do I that. Know, I know your old boss. I might have to, uh, <laughs> to, to pick on him yeah, about that. Ask him about his road oh, trips well. and what shows he's watched. Yeah. We got to have him on the show in the future, we should. too. He'd be should. a good guest on yeah. here. Tom's awesome. All right. Well, let's see. Let's take another question. Okay. Um, oh, we actually, we have a voicemail from a listener. Did we give that to Sean? Did I give that to Sean? <laughs> I think we did. I think we did. Hi, my name is Tanika. Um, I have the iPhone 4S, and I'm wondering, can I keep the phone number that I already have as my own personal line, and then for a group of other people, can I have another line? Oh. Uh, another phone number for other people. I'm wondering if um, cause there's certain people that I want to have my phone number and then certain people I wouldn't mind giving my phone number to, but when they start acting creepy, hmm. I can <laughs> not, I can disregard that line or what uh -huh. have you. Uh, okay. I guess that is my question. Cool. Is, is that going to be possible for me to keep my iPhone number and to also have a Magic Jack number? Oh, Magic Jack. Oh, and the other thing is do I need Wi-Fi connection in order for this to work? Because I don't have internet throughout my house. Thank you. Hmm. All right. So we're talking about so two lines. Two lines on one iPhone. Can can she do that, Ray? And and Magic Jack she brought up. Now, what is Magic Jack? Magic Jack is a phone service that you can, basically you plug in a USB device mm -hmm. and you plug a phone into that and you have phone service. Okay. Anywhere in the world. It's really it's great. Incredibly cheap. Yeah, my friend Ryan went to you know Ryan. Yeah, uh, he went to China and mm -hmm. was getting local phone calls on his laptop. Wow, cool. uh, and it was this was back in the early two thousands. It was still like really new. Um, it was fantastic. It was like just dialed a nine zero four number. That's our area code here in Jacks. And uh, yeah, just yeah. So taking what taking they, numbers in China. That's what we did with some of our relatives that live overseas. Yeah. That we brought a, a magic jack with us uh, okay. for them to use overseas. Yeah, so cool. yeah, so that way we can call each other as a local call. Very nice. So, so as cool as magic jack is, unfortunately, magic jack aside, there's no magic jack for iPhone. Yeah. Um. So no, uh, unfortunately, no. You can't have two phone two phone numbers on an iPhone, uh, not without some major modifications. There is actually a case. That you can put your iPhone in and it gives you access to a second SIM card. Don't touch it. It's horrible. <laughs> um, it's really bad. It's it. it first off, it violates your contract or your warranty. It'll be void. Um, so the iPhone doesn't really support uh, dual SIM cards. So right, you were I, you were uh, talking earlier about mm -hmm. Google Voice. Does that have anything to do with this? Well, you know that actually is something that might work. Um, because that we is a second phone number. You could yeah. even port your number to Google I, Voice. I if use you wanted Google to. Voice. Um, I have a separate phone number that I do exactly what you're talking about. So there is kind of a solution. It's not as seamless as I'd like it to be. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a number that I give out to people I don't like, or people I don't want to call me, or people I want to be able to control whether or not I get their calls. Because uh, unfortunately, it was something we were going to talk about too with blocking calls. It sounds like she really wants to block her calls. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, there's no native way in iPhone to block calls. Uh, let me jump in there real quick. Sure. iOS 7 will have it. There is. Yeah, that's right. You, you, that's good stuff. Bam! There I knew something go. about iOS. Knew, Look at this you know guy. What? I knew that. <laughs> uh, in iOS 6 and, four and beyond, or backwards, uh, no, there's no way to do it. But yeah, you're right. In iOS 7, which is coming out this fall... You can block calls. Um, and the iPhone 4S is getting iOS 7, cross my fingers. Um, it's supposed to, so we'll see. And we'll assume it gets that feature. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, there's no native way to do that. There is this trick you can do where you can create a group uh, that and change their ring to a silent ring. Yeah. <laughs> that works. I do that and with a couple put those people. numbers into that group. Yeah, yeah. And then you automatically ignore those calls. Hey, am I you in can that group jailbreak for it. you? Yes. <laughs> You can jailbreak your phone, and there's a way to do that. But honestly, that's one of those things where I wouldn't bother doing because it's kind of kind of iffy. Um, but with Google Voice, you get a separate phone number, and you can give that phone number out, and it forwards your calls to your phone. So they call you on five 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 one two one two, and it goes to your phone number. But the thing is, um, you don't have to have Wi-Fi for it. 
but it doesn't always work perfectly. Mm-hmm. I've lost some calls that didn't get transferred, and so it gets kind of iffy. And when you call back, it's going to have your yes, own number. Yes, that's the trick. When you call someone out from your phone, it's going to show your number. Now, is that always how it works on iPhone? Because I know on Android, you can choose. Yeah. With Android, it's a little bit more baked in. You can actually choose to call out from Google Voice. Okay. But you have to have Wi-Fi for that to work. Okay. Now, it's the same thing, too. There is a Google Voice app for iPhone. It's really the worst app that Google has ever put out. (laughs) And you can make calls from the Google Voice app, and it'll show your Google Voice phone number you got to have a strong either data connection or uh, Wi-Fi. And honestly, I've tried using it. I've tried using it for about two years. I just don't even bother. Yeah. I end up just calling from my main line. And here's my concern with Google Voice. Um, And this is a little bit inside baseball. But to me, Google Voice has the feel of an app that Google is about to sunset. Yeah, Google is pretty... I don't think they're going to support it forever. Google is pretty notorious for whenever they see a product isn't doing what they want to. They just kind of let it die. And they don't do anything and update it. And then after it's been dying on the vine for a while, they go, eh, it's time to cut it. Yeah. You mentioned the app looks like it has been updated in ages. And that that is a telltale sign that Google doesn't care anymore. If they have just stopped supporting it, stopped doing anything with it. It's really sad, too, because they bought a company called Grand Central, which Grand Central was amazing. I loved that place. And they bought You're making me sad right now, right? I (laughs) know. (laughs) <laughs> they bought Grand Central. You could do your uh, personal, which you can do personalized voicemails with Google Voice. So, like, if your mom calls, she gets a specific voicemail. If your boss calls, they get a certain voicemail. <laughs> or if it's somebody you don't want to talk to, it can block their call and just goes to, to voicemail automatically. It doesn't forward it to you. With Grand Central, there were really cool things like you could set it up where it played the disconnected tone. <laughs> <laughs> that was their voicemail greeting, the disconnected tone. Um, or you could, you know, just tell them, hey, don't call back, it, that sort of thing. Yeah. Now, are there um, other, or just silence. Are there comparable services out there that she could use maybe instead? Um, there is one called Umail. Um, it, it doesn't give you a phone number, but it does with Android. It does let you block the number. Uh, again, this is iPhone, though. I'm not sure if the Umail app will let you block a number or not. I'm not certain on that. I wish I did know. I, I'd look, I'll look into it, and I'll find out and put it in the show notes and let you know. Um, but that does give you uh, personalized voicemail. It takes over your voicemail account. Uh, I have I have one more idea, and it's a little bit lower tech than these. All right. I think she should buy another phone. Oh. Like a $20 prepaid phone. Okay. And she can give that number out. That's true. That would work. Um, the only thing is, I mean... I know personally, like, I want to give my phone number out to people I do actually want to talk to mm-hmm. fairly regularly, but I just want to be able to stop talking to them if I choose to. Yeah, just get a little phone, right, put so. it in your purse. I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping that it, uh, they, they continue running it. But there, there. There's something here. It won't help this particular caller. Uh-huh. This is an Android solution. Yeah. But most uh, modern Android uh, phones these days, if you long press on a phone number in your log, you can add it to your blacklist yeah. or your reject list. Yep. So that's a feature in and, Android currently. And that, I think, is exactly how it's going to work with iOS 7, right. uh, mm-hmm. that, that you'll have that option. So, um, you know, the the simple solution is just get the iPhone 4S and, uh, you know, hang on until iOS 7 comes out mm-hmm. probably next month. It looks like there's going to be an, an Apple event September 10th. Yeah. Uh, that is probably going to be the announcement of the iPhone something or another, 5S, 6, whatever. <laughs> probably 5S. I think it's going to be the 5S and the 5C. I called it on this show. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's uh, you just wait until then. That's probably when iOS 7 is going to come out for the 4S and the 5 now. So that's one way to do it. And then you won't have to have Wi-Fi or Magic Jack or uh, any jailbreaking or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay. Well, do we have any more questions? I think we are done. All right. Well, that's all the questions that we've answered. So Yeah. Well. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for all of your questions and keep them coming. Call us at our toll-free number. It's 1-888-972-9868. Or you can send us an email at questions at deemable.com. Also, subscribe to the show. Search for Deemable Tech on iTunes or and YouTube. Or you can point your favorite podcast app to dmbl.co slash pod. Our producer is Sean Birch. Thanks to Robert Snyder for video production assistance. I'm Ray Hollister. I'm Tom Braun. I'm Mike Khalil. And this is Deemable Tech. Thanks for listening and have a great week. <laughs>